Once you reach the end game in Honkai Star Rail, you can put together some really strong teams that can take on any new game mode that is added into the game. And that's exactly what I decided to do. I took on the Stellar Shimmer event with some of my strongest teams to push them to their limits and see just how well they can do with some really amazing buffs. And I even got to use some characters that I don't own, which was really fun for me. First up is going to be with Firefly's premium team composed of Ron May, Trailblazer Harmony, and Gallagher. This is going to be really fun to use my own characters for this. So let's jump into this. I'm excited for this one. So it goes without saying that having a lot of weakness break capabilities for this stage is going to be important. Once I'm in the Sam state, my Firefly is at a whopping 400% break effect. That's without Ron May's E. And I can keep attacking after I take care of them, which is good. So this is pretty much like the buff that you get in Simulated Universe for the Hunt Path, which is always nice. It makes being able to play Firefly so much more easier, like quality of life. All right, I should be able to get rid of this enemy's type weakness right here. There we go. Let's finally go ahead and get my Ron May up. So now because of that, my Firefly is going to be at 440% break effect. Not too bad. And we should be able to just one shot this enemy. There we go. 307,000. Not too bad at all. And then I can follow it up with Gallagher here. His ult is so helpful here. Like against these enemies especially. But that's fine. Let's just do this. Even Ron May. That's a lot of damage right there on the super break. It's crazy and almost a million wow that's awesome and we're already at argenti this is usually how i fight argenti in the apocalyptic shadow being able to keep attacking over and over again by taking those enemies out but all right let's do one more so we can actually weakness break argenti here there we go and then i'm gonna weakness break the enemy to the side of him there we go <laughs> okay and then one more for good measure is it gonna finish it 5 hp that's a little rough i feel like the biggest thing that my firefly still needs is some more speed because she's just a little bit shy of being able to have that extra turn all right let's get that refresh in and then one more firefly attack should be able to finish this right there we go oh he's not dead really oh my gosh he hung on with a thread of hp that sucks and just like before i'm gonna be prioritizing breaking the weaknesses of all of the other ones so that i can keep attacking argenti I'll actually have his weakness down before I have the others, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, at this point, he's extremely tanky, though. I mean, I'm doing half a million to him with every hit, but he's just not dying. And there we go. Argenti is dead. So really solid. I got the SS rank. Perfect win. Again, if I had just a little bit more speed on my Firefly, I think I could have got it like a cycle sooner. But that was really fun. Next up, we're going to be taking Akron with one of my favorite Nihility team comps. I'm pretty sure they want you to use Silver Wolf and Pele here because applying debuffs on enemies is going to make your ultimate do so much more for this stage. But I just really love taking Black Swan and Kafka, especially because they're applying debuffs and dots. So it's extra damage on top of everything. As I said, you get a lot of damage towards the ultimate for especially Akron. There we go. Okay, I got my first Akron ult. So we'll just go ahead and pop this just to see. My Akron is a lot stronger than when I did this before too. I'm actually going to make a video with her because her build is like almost finally complete as far as free to play goes. But let's see. Can that give me the ult? Uh, I will be able to get Kafka's ult. There we go. I can drop that in and Fushuan's going to be giving me a lot of stacks for Akron as well. Like always. Like look at that dot though. Like we almost killed to where we don't even need Akron's ult here. That's pretty impressive. And there we go. Kafka finished it off. That's why I like having the dots more than the other ones because the defense shred is very important with Pela and Silverwolf. And Kafka's going to finish this wave too. She seems to be the cleaner this time around. But we have finally gotten to Bronya, which is really impressive because I haven't even really lost too many cycles yet. And what's interesting about this one is we're not going to have a chance to break the weakness. But even so, Acheron's able to absolutely obliterate her all right let's drop this in it might be enough stacks to where yeah it's actually plenty it is plenty to kill off bronya but once we get to this point is where they get really tanky if i'm being honest like we have to start doing more damage based on these buffs i don't want to waste Akron's ult early so i'm actually going to use kafka's ult here first there we go because that got us weak enough to where we can actually get the weakness break damage on top of this and just like that it is dead almost 1 million damage good job akron this one's gonna be a little bit tougher than just a second ago but i'm sure we'll still be fine all right and with this i can get my first akron usage i should be able to get another one deciding if they go after fushuan or not so i can get those stacks 
but even just with 16 on there i did half her health so that's that's actually solid all right now charge me back up i need them to get me the stacks this is just how it went in pure fiction for me having them attack fushuan is really good for getting those stacks up and that's gonna give me kafka's ult nice let's drop this in we're at 20 stacks now i mean kafka alone right there she almost took care of it for us all right and here comes the last acheron ultimate to finish things off with the max 30 stacks let's see how much this does one point three seven million damage good job acheron for real like she is so strong with s5 good night and sleep well and i am absolutely happy with how she performed here for the third stage i'm going to be using two trial characters this time around which is the most up until this point because i don't have topaz or robin on my account and they're going to be pretty much essential for this since you want to take follow-up attack character but just because they're trial characters they shouldn't be slept on because they're capable of doing a lot of damage all right here we go let's start in with robin's e to go and because i'm using trial characters these two are gonna have the best stats i mean she's a support so it's okay but topaz yeah 68 98 that's not really that great but even so this team does really well unfortunately i don't have the last missing piece for the premium follow-up attack team because i don't own adventuring on my account we do have the defense down not only from payload's ult but i have the ensnared light cone on her as well so we can take full advantage of that but this should give me Topaz's ult. Nice. All right. I need Numbi to start being a little nuke for us. Mm, let's go ahead and yeah, let's take this enemy out. The ult might even be able to one shot. Very, very close. Yeah, I'll attack this enemy in the middle. I mean, look at this damage. It's crazy with Robin boosting you up like and then Numbi's going to finish this. And we are at our first Kakolia boss just like that. That was really, really fast. All right. That's going to be a problem because I don't have any sustain here. So if I get hit too many times like that, we're going to be in trouble. But we can whittle down the weakness here pretty quickly. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. All right. I'm going to save my doctor ratio ult because I really don't think that we need it. I'm going to save it for the next stage so we can get through it as quickly as possible. Especially because Kakolia is already almost dead here. And with doctor ratios ult, oh, we're doing a lot. But let's get that Topaz proc in here too. Numbi coming in to finish it. There we go. Now I just need to do one more. Ooh, 137,000. That's without the follow-up. Nice. And we started it like that. Okay, that's good. That's ideal. All right, but let's apply some defense down. We still have one cycle left. I think we should be able to do it. The problem is we don't have her weakness broken. Otherwise, we'd be able to take advantage of a lot of damage. All right, there we go. Now her weakness is going to get broken. So now we can stack as much damage as possible. We might even get Robin's ult back again. And if that happens, we have some extra time that we can borrow. But all right, give me Dr. Ratio's ult. Nice. So we're going to stack this with Numbi as much as possible with Pela, And just let the damage come in. Let's see how fast I can get through this. Hopefully, I have enough time left. Oh, it came just down to the wire with one attack left. There we go. That stage with the trial characters, I feel like is pretty tough because although they are really amazing, they don't have a lot of speed. I think if the speed was a little bit higher, we would be able to do it easier. But that was a lot of fun still. Thankfully for the next stage, I do have every single character on my account. And this is one of my favorite team compositions because Don Hong and Byron Lune is considered still to be one of my main characters. And this is actually an interesting one too because it takes advantage of you actually getting killed and then coming back with full or close to ultimate energy, which is really awesome. Okay, here we go. I have Imbiber to Lune out for the first time in what feels like a long time because I don't really use him as much nowadays, even though he's still considered my main. And this is a really interesting challenge because as you can see, when I get knocked down, I die right away. But I do get stacks of damage when I come back. And on top of that, I get 50% of my energy back. So I pretty much always have my ultimates at all time. But I do have a lot of ways to increase my speed. I have Asta here. I have Dance 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 on my Sparkle. So yeah, lots of ways to skip the line a little bit. Plus I have infinite skill points because I have Sparkle here. So that's going to be really solid for keeping us in the fight. But all right, let's see. 
there we go the whole team got taken out so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drop some defense shred in here might as well pop astas while we're at it and then i do have this with sparkle that i can use to get me really close to and by relune's ultimate there we go that works too it's a little rng based because i don't want characters like Pela getting hit because she already gets her ultimate super quick yep there we go nice and now we're on to the first memory zone meme battle which i'm already set up for i got the defense shred so let's see if i can use him by to lune and i don't think the old's gonna kill but i mean i do have sparkle right after that yeah we're good okay there we go not too big of a deal i actually like the boss fight for this even though on the second one i have to be careful because i can get sealed away and i think that's what i really like about this challenge is that they actually made something different like you're not used to playing this way so it does make you think outside the box a little bit or you just want to get targeted as much as possible okay i need to get off this wave already though so let's go ahead and do this the good thing is that i'm gonna get targeted by this enemy if it survives there we go so that's gonna get me really close to my ultimate and then i just have to take the one more hit and just like that we're onto the memory zone meme boss fight we have about one cycle left i just have to make sure that i don't get sealed up so if we take a look at my stacks as you can see i have 44 from the buff and that's giving me a whopping 18,000 attack wow that's crazy so let's get to it then and there we go six hundred thousand to kill off the memory zone meme that was a really fun challenge because not only was my environment Lune probably the strongest he's ever been but it feels like really good justice compared to back in the day when that boss in particular used to bully me on memory of chaos for this stage because i don't have the amazing boot hill i am going to be taking the trial character but i do have the rest of the team and even though firefly isn't necessarily recommended here there's not even a fire weakness the combination of damage that they have together is really amazing so i think that the synergy is going to be pretty good even though this boot hill because he's a trial character doesn't have the best stats in the world he's still going to have an immense amount of break effect plus whatever i'm able to offer him and that's what i really like about these game modes in honkai star rail that we get for events because i don't have this character so this is really the only way that i'm able to use him although i would not mind getting my ultimate we're really close to boot hills ult too which is like one of my favorite in the game because it's just such like a classic western style all right but we might actually steal some of the thunder with my firefly like for things like that i'd rather just use her but let's get the first proc of the ult it's really cool it reminds me a little bit of like cassidy from overwatch but way cooler let's see if the dance 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 can give me an extra cycle it didn't that's okay though we have plenty of time we're breezing through this and firefly is gonna come in and maybe even one shot this enemy oh very close and we made it to our first japard boss and this one is a lot simpler of course than at the end oh uh, that's a lot good job Boo. like that's a thing this is a trial character too i can only imagine if i actually had boot hill on my team the only problem that i'm running into with this team is of course i don't have sustain not that i really need to worry about it but i don't have enough skill points to share around all right i think it's about time we get off of this phase so it'll leave us with two cycles for the final boss fight 
Mm, I feel like I should go after this enemy. Yeah, let's target this one. That way we can do that nice super break damage. The other enemy died regardless. And I'm good on run maze stacks. So let's just use boot hill and see just how much he's able to do. 600,000. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. And we can come in and break Japard right away. All right, Firefly. No, not as much as I was hoping for, but that's pretty good. All right, Boot Hill come in with this super break damage. Let's see, how much break effect is he even at? 307, okay. 800,000 damage there, wow. Okay, if I had my Sam state, Japard would be dead, but he might just die here anyway. And there we have it. What an amazing break effect team. I hope that I can get Boo Hill in the future because this stage has definitely sold me on him. Here I have another set of trial characters that I do not have on my account. Argenti, which is featured right now on the main banner. And Hu Hu, which will be coming back in the next version of Honkai Star Rail. This is a team that is going to be doing a lot of ultimate damage and also replenishing my regeneration and boosting up the attack of Argenti. And because it features Stellaron Hunter Sam, I know that it's going to be a really cool run. So let's get straight into it. So we actually get to start it off with Argenti's ult already. And this team is really good for getting his ultimate energy back plus Ho Ho, which is one of the best supports in the game simply for the fact that i'm able to keep getting energy while healing getting an attack percent boost i'm really considering summoning for her when she comes back in the next version and since this is a trial character he does have some pretty impressive stacks and i can only imagine what it would be like again if i had this character all right let's end wave three and then that's gonna take us to our first boss fight with Stellaron Hunter Sam here and unfortunately he's not a very tanky boss but he does have his weakness covered up for a majority of this so it can make it very difficult to do a large portion of damage to him early on like this without having to waste some cycles there we go now his weakness is revealed so I can use hoo -huh. that's gonna give me the last bit of energy that I need for Argenti's ult so let's use that and then I do have Ting Yun after that as well so we'll use this that is going to give me Argentis, and then we'll also have Ting Yun's one more time after that. But I can also proc another Argenti ult. So you just keep stacking this over and over again, which is really nice. Now, unfortunately, my Ting Yun is not E6. So as you can see, I'm just short of that energy. And for that reason alone, I don't know if I will have the enough turns to be able to actually clear this in time. All right, let's get the last bit of energy I need to where we can use Argenti's ultimate. That's going to clear this stage, and then we'll start the next one off with full ultimates. So we should be able to get through this enemy pretty quickly. I think the smart move here is to use Ting Yun's ult. And then I can follow it up with Ha Ha, since I'm going to need a little bit more energy. But actually, I can use Sparkle. Give me a little bit of a damage boost. All right, and then this is going to give me extremely close, I would imagine. So let's pop Ho Ho. And the main enemy is almost dead. Unfortunately, there's a lot of the minions, so we're not going to clear it right here. Otherwise, we would probably have had enough time to get pretty far. But again, I think because I don't have enough energy on him, I'm always just short of the ultimate. There we go. Ting Yun finished it off, and we are finally on to Celeron Hunter Sam. But not quite enough turns left. But I still think that this was a good run because it showcases just how strong you can do with Argenti, especially with a team like this. I think it's just unfortunate that I don't have E6 Ting Yun, but more so than that, I just am always right short of Argenti's ultimate, which just makes it where I feel like I'm not able to clear this in time. All right, so we're going to take care of Sam. On this stage, he's really tanky compared to the earlier one, but moreover, it's just because I wasn't able to break him soon, but look how close we actually are. There we go. We did get S rank. We were so, so nearly there. We're finally here at the Jade stage, and this is going to be very familiar to the most recent Pure Fiction cycles. And of course, this follow-up attack team here is going to do amazing damage since the typings all line up completely with the enemies that we have. Okay, let's start things off by putting this onto Herda. I usually like to do it for her because she's going to attack a lot more, especially because there's not a lot of fire typings on this actual boss fight but i still decided to bring them because i need sustain that can weakness break and i also need to take advantage of these stacks that hurt is able to pick up or himiko is able to pick up rather because she also does follow up attacks of course there we go we're gonna already start things off the cycle and this is gonna be really fun because we have an amazing buff that's super strong this is more or less very similar to the current pure fiction cycle the only difference is i decided to bring gallagher instead of ron may because we're in for a little bit more here 
and the enemies are arguably a little bit tougher one of the biggest things too is this buff which is going to be very helpful since one of the most annoying things about this stage in particular is the fact that there's so many of the little enemies that spawn that we need something else that can help us clear it all out because in a lot of cases we actually kill the boss off before them in this case maybe not but it's okay so let's proc that oh my gosh look at all the follow-up attacks like jade is so amazing for this this enemy does have a fire weakness along with the deer so we can kind of take advantage of that but because i don't have ron may here i'm not able to break through right away like that so we're gonna have to rely on jade to pick it up for us all right the main boss should be dead from this buff right oh just barely okay that's fine no problem i'll drop her to ulton we still got plenty of time and just like that we're on to the first deer boss fight really really good we have gallagher's ult just about to come in and in most cases i end up actually killing the deer before i break his weakness so what i'm gonna do is focus the flowers a little more because a lot of the time like i said those things are gonna be left over when the deer is actually gone so i need to get to work on that but we will weakness break here too so let's do that we also we have a lot of stacks at the bottom already 100 plus for the starlight so that's going to make our damage a lot higher than it would be normally. At the very least, we're going to kill the deer off. And then we have that buff to come in uh, and maybe clean everything up for us. We'll see. There we go. Let's start the cycle. That's what's up. And thankfully, the buff cleaned it up for us. That's nice. We like to see that. Now we can just use Jade's ultimate. And hopefully, we can get through this really quickly. There's a lot of enemies that spawn along with this. So we have to take care of them as quickly as possible. all right we have herda and himiko's ult though here if we needed to get rid of other, some of the other phases mm, at this point let me just go ahead and use himiko it's unfortunate that more of these don't have a fire weakness otherwise i'd be able to get more procs in but oh there we go is that gonna get herda though it did get herda nice he died though all right <laughs> thank you we have two cycles left let's see what we can do i think the smart thing here is to get gallagher's ult because he's gonna do a lot more if i can get rid of the deer as quickly as possible then i have more flowers that i can attack so i'm actually fine with that yeah let's kill this enemy that's gonna give us the stack we need and then after i use the ult we should be able to call her to in for a little bit of backup right plus we have himiko too yeah we're fine let's break through the deer here and i'm really close to gallagher's ult too if, if i need it for some of these other enemies that buff is doing so much like look at that that was like what two million damage are you kidding me from a buff that's passive that's awesome don't think this is gonna get me to the ult though unfortunately unless oh it is gonna oh it still didn't give me the ult that's unfortunate it's okay yeah let's do this instead all right and there's a good chance they're probably gonna hopefully not seal my herda okay if that's the case then i'm gonna use this i want to try to get rid of these i don't want to get sealed there we go that did it all right ss rank that was a really fun one with jade i think that the little enemies can be annoying even my imperfect build on my jade was able to do this and i think it's because this team combination is absolutely broken for these type of enemies for the final stage i'm gonna be taking the kafka black swan dot team that they recommend for you but i'm personally bringing acheron because i feel like she's just really great for this team in general especially because there's so much lightning weakness throughout this stage but let's hop into the final challenge challenge in today's video this is a really great way to end the video off because this is one of my favorite team combinations in honkai star world nowadays not only because dot characters like Capcom and black swan are amazing but also just having acheron here just completes the team and i can almost never even take this team anymore without acheron there because the dot damage mixed in with her amazing capabilities is just awesome with black swan's rerun on the horizon i hope a lot of people take her into consideration because i'm really glad i pulled her back when i did since she's amazing against these Panacone enemies and just applying dots in general. I barely have any Arcana stacks on these enemies and they're they're taking a lot of damage. All right, let's target this enemy that's gonna make its advance forward soon, but I can actually target this one. And there go the dots and that one's down too. Let's go and we're on to the first Yanqing boss fight. Now this guy is really easy to take care of with dots because of Acheron's team as well. She can one-shot these swords, but even Kafka's ult can at this stage. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I do need to heal up a little bit, but there we go. We're going to drop that in. That's going to kill off every single sword mixed in with the dot. And just like that, we can go ahead and target Yanqing with Akron's ult. Like, this is like the best team to counter Yanqing because the swords, he doesn't get that phase pretty much. All right. And I'm really close to Akron's ult. Oh, I did get sealed though, but that's okay. We woke up right away. So it's not the biggest thing in the world. Let's drop in Akron's ult, which is going to get him extremely weak. 
and if it doesn't finish him which it doesn't look like it the dot should take care of the rest there we go yeah i would prefer if they would go after gallagher since he's the tankiest he really eats it up especially because he has the highest effect resistance out of everybody here so i was able to break through the monkey but we'll see if the dots are gonna do enough this is where it really feels like it's slowing down a little bit and there we go there goes the monkey can the other one go down nice we have pretty much three cycles left so I feel very good about that. And we got Akron's ult just in time. Yeah, this was a really good rotation. So I can break all of these. And we're really close to Gallagher, so I don't need to worry about dying after that, hopefully. Don't freeze me, though. That'd be great. Okay, nice. He targeted the perfect one. Yeah, so this run is pretty much over. This team absolutely destroys Yanqing. Like, it's crazy. There's such a heavy counter, and this is my favorite way to go against him in Simulated Universe, too. So hopefully this gives you a couple ideas if you're struggling. Thankfully, the effect resistance came through there. Nice. We'll drop Kafka's ult and then we'll follow it up with Acheron's one more time. It doesn't look like we're going to get his weakness bar down in time, but man, the dots are doing so much damage. I'm going to drop that in. Actually, we might be able to weakness break him. We'll see. No, it doesn't look like it, unfortunately, but that's okay because we got Acheron's ult just like that. So let's drop this in and then we might end up finishing it with Kafka. But this was a really fun way to end it because, like I said, this is one of my favorite team comps. And I think that's what makes this challenge so much fun is using all my best built characters and seeing how they hold up in a pretty much boss rush style gameplay. All right, I guess we're going to finish it with Acheron then. And that is going to do it. The last challenge for this video with a bang and there we go ss rank to finish it off we had two cycles left so i even beat my new record that was a really good run and that is going to bring an end to the challenge it was definitely difficult and although i wasn't able to get ss rank for every single one i was able to use some team compositions that i either just now put together or for characters that i still don't have on my account which will be good for the future let me know what teams you guys decided to take on this you can definitely experiment as i didn't exactly follow the formula with some of these and decided to take characters that i knew would get the job done extremely well i really enjoy these type of events in honkai star rail and even though i was a little late to cover it i can't wait for the next one and i will definitely try my best to have some more interesting teams by the time that comes around but yeah that's gonna do it i hope y'all enjoyed this thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next video